Hey, it's Glenn Livingston from DefeatYourCravings.com. And if you're like most people, when you get on a new food plan or you make a new rule, there's a part of you that says, oh, why bother? You're feeling really motivated now. You're feeling really strong now. But eventually you're going to break this silly rule. So you might as well just go ahead and binge now. And it's a very pernicious idea. We call it a squeal because um, it's true that motivation comes and goes. It waxes and wanes. And you might be all excited today, but there'll come a time when you're not so excited tomorrow or the next day or in five weeks or five years. And so your food monster says, well, eventually I'm going to get you. So you might as well do it now. Here's how you beat that. First of all, you need to recognize that there really is no eventually. Uh, the, the food monster does not have a time machine any more than you do, and it doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow any more than you do. Really what it's trying to do is get you now. The key part of the squeal is so you might as well go ahead and binge now. And what you want to do is flex your binge free now muscle. You want to bring it into the present and say, all I need to do is never binge now. All I need to do is follow this plan now and I can follow it forever because the because forever is an infinite string of nows. You can only ever use the present moment to be healthy, so I'll use the present moment to be healthy, and therefore when the future comes, it will still be the present. But there's another piece to this. That's very helpful for some people, but sometimes it's not enough. There, there are two other pieces to this. The second piece to this is the idea that the ability to bring things into the present itself um, is a muscle. It's a mental muscle, and every time that you flex it, it gets stronger. So your food monster is probably saying you're strong now, but you're going to be weaker in the future. But the truth is, if you work that muscle out every time you work it out, that muscle is going to get stronger. So the opposite is true. You're going to be stronger in the future, not weaker, if you just keep on flexing your binge free now muscle. So take that, Mr. Food Monster. The last piece is that if you construct the right food plan, it's something that is manageable and doable that provides an overwhelming number of benefits as compared to the effort that it takes and the cravings you have to go through, then you have a bar that's low enough to jump over every day. And that's what you want. You want a bar that's low enough to jump over every day, even if you wake up one day and you don't have your mojo, which I guarantee will happen sooner or later because motivation waxes and wanes. So essentially you're telling your food monster, look, Yes, I might have tremendous motivation now, but I'm setting up a plan which doesn't require tremendous motivation because I'm going to do it day in and day out, and it's just going to become part of my identity. If I always put my gym clothes out before bed, and I don't have anything harder than that to do, then eventually I'll look at those clothes and I'll say, you know what? I must be a gym goer. I know I'm becoming a person who puts their gym clothes out before bed, and probably you're going to go to the gym and show up. Or I know an Olympic swimmer who only has a rule for herself that she has to show up at the pool, and dip her toe in. She does not have to swim a mile. She doesn't have to do her laps. She just has to dip her toe in. And by having that low a bar, you get yourself to do it every day and your identity function takes over. You, because we're, our, our brains are always looking for shortcuts of the kind of person that we are to determine what we habitually do at the moment of temptation. So you want a you want to flex your binge free now muscle and you want to set a low enough bar that you can do it day in and day out. And then the last piece is you want to rehearse what we call your three R's, your reasons or your big why, your rules so that your rules are always fresh in your mind and you know when you're about to break them, and then your refutations or the um, reasons that your food monster's logic are false. So if it says you can just start tomorrow, you tell it that, how about you just start tomorrow? Mr. Food Monster, because the only time I can ever eat healthy is in the present. Or if it says that your parents were doomed, so you're genetically doomed to overeat. Your parents were fat, so you're generically doomed to overeat. You can tell your food monster that um, more than half the variance of, uh, of obesity is determined by diet and lifestyle. Yes, genetics are important, but you can still be a healthy, thin person. Um, even if both of your parents were horribly obese. And um, I know that from experience. Okay, so that's how you beat the idea that you're going to binge eventually. You just flex your binge-free now muscle, 
you have a uh, simple set of rules or one simple rule that you can jump over in that bar almost no matter what's happening in your life and um, then you rehearse your rules reasons or refutations and you excise that cancerous logic from your food monster's brain so from your brain so that um, it can't justify it for you anymore and those three things together are a powerful combination if you'd like help we offer it to you at defeatyourcravingscoaching.com defeatyourcravingscoaching.com as I record this now, we are briefly open for new enrollments. We're usually closed. We have a limited number of coaches and a variety of reasons why we can only open periodically. But we're presently open, and we'd love to have you at defeatyourcravingscoaching.com. Thanks.